Chapter 22. The Hour Bonuses I noticed that Laura had suddenly become sad at remembering her husband, so I changed the subject. What can you tell me about the hour bonuses? Is it some kind of mental currency? My hostess's sad expression vanished, and she replied attentively, It isn't money per se, but an individual service coupon with purchasing power. Purchasing power? I'll explain, she replied. Here in Nasalar, producing essential clothing and food is everyone's job. There are central services of distribution at the government center and similar departments at the ministries. The central storehouse is common property. At my silent look of wonder, she added, everyone cooperates in improving the public welfare. The life of the community depends on it. However, everyone who works acquires certain rights. Every inhabitant of Nasalar receives provisions of food and clothing in strictly necessary proportions. But everyone who makes an effort to obtain our bonuses is entitled to certain prerogatives in the social community. Spirits who don't yet work may have to do so here. However, all do receive basic lodging but only those who contribute may own a private home. The idle ones are, of course, provided with clothing, but only devoted workers are able to satisfy their individual tastes in dress. Understand? Idle spirits may room in our fields of repose or in the treatment complexes at the request of working friends, whereas souls who work earn our bonuses and may enjoy the company of their loved ones in the entertainment areas, for example, or they may take advantage of the teachings of learned instructors at the different schools of all the ministries. We need to learn the price of each step on our spiritual ascent. Each one of us who works must contribute at least eight hours of useful service per 24-hour day. Since there are so many work programs, the government center allows those who are really willing to cooperate for the common good to put in four extra hours per day. Thus, many earn as much as 72-hour bonuses per week, not counting those earned in sacrificial service, for which the bonuses are doubled and sometimes tripled. Then is the hour bonus the only standard of payment? Yes, it is the standard payment for all our colony's workers, not only administrators, but subordinates as well. I was surprised and recalled the way things were organized on earth. But how can you reconcile the payment with the nature of the job? For example, if an administrator receives eight-hour bonuses in an ordinary day, will a driver receive the same? Isn't the former's work worth more than the latter's? Laura smiled at my question and explained, Everything is relative. In positions of responsibility, as in subordinate ones, if the work requires personal sacrifice, the corresponding remuneration is multiplied to compensate. To analyze your particular question more thoroughly, however, we first of all need to forget certain earthly preconceptions. The nature of service is an issue of utmost importance everywhere. But on earth the matter presents a more difficult problem. The majority of incarnates are simply preparing for the spirit of service by learning to work in the different sectors of human life. That is why it's essential that earthly pay scales be set with scrupulous care. All material earnings are only transitory, but workers are often obsessed with how much money they are making. Some leave enormous fortunes behind that are spent recklessly by their heirs. Others accumulate bank accounts that cause their personal martyrdom and family ruin. On the other hand, it is fundamental to realize that 70% of Earth's administrators have no regard for the moral duties inherent to their positions. And the same may be said of an approximately equal percentage of those in subordinate positions. Almost all of them complain about the lack of a professional incentive in spite of receiving salaries in keeping with the positions they hold. Governments and companies pay doctors who neglect their duties and turn to other interests, and they pay ordinary workers who merely kill time. Where is the spirit of service? There are specialists in the finance industry who have never fully realized the responsibility of their obligations. 
They take advantage of favorable laws and, like poisonous flies upon sacred bread, demand facilities, huge bonuses, and pensions. You must realize, however, that all of them will pay dearly for their negligence. The time is still far off when social institutions will be able to fairly evaluate the quality of someone's labor, because on the higher spiritual planes, work is never compensated without taking into consideration the moral value that has been exerted. These words awakened me two new concepts. Noticing my thirst for learning, my friend continued, An individual's real earnings are of a spiritual nature. And in our organization, the hour bonus varies considerably according to the nature of the job. In the Ministry of Regeneration, for example, we have the Regeneration Hour bonus. In the Ministry of Elucidation, we have the Elucidation Hour bonus, and so on. Hence, when we examine the issue of someone's spiritual merit, we have to check the individual's work record to determine what kind of service has been rendered. The real earnings consist in experience, education, enrichment through divine blessings, and increased potential. Accordingly, diligence and dedication mean almost everything. Since this is a transitional city, most of us are preparing ourselves with an eye on having to return to physical circles. Following such a principle, it's only natural that a person who has put in 5,000 hours at a job in regenerative work will have earned a greater measure of sublime effort on his own behalf. One who has worked 6,000 hours in the ministry of elucidation will have become wiser. We may spend our hour bonuses, however, because our individual file contains a record of the time we spent in useful service. It is even more valuable than our bonuses because it entitles us to valuable privileges. Her explanations interested me deeply. Can we spend our hour bonuses on behalf of friends? I asked. Certainly, she answered. We can share the blessings of our effort with whomever we please. It's a faithful worker's inalienable right. Thousands and thousands of individuals here on Nasalar have benefited from friendship and fraternal devotion. She smiled and continued, The more work time we contribute, the greater the number of intercessions we're allowed. Here we all understand that nothing is without its price, and that in order to receive we must give something in return. So, asking for something is a highly significant event for each one of us because only those who have earned the right are in any position to ask favors and provide help. Understand? What about inheritance? I inquired. That complication isn't of any concern here, Laura replied, smiling. For example, let's examine my own case. The time is drawing near for me to return to the physical realm. I have 3,000 assistance hours bonuses in my personal service account. I cannot leave them to my daughter who is about to arrive. Instead, their value will be placed in the common treasury, and my family will only be entitled to inherit my home. However, my service record has entitled me to intercede on her behalf and to procure work and assistance for her. It will also assure me of invaluable assistance from organizations of our spirit colony during my stay in incarnate circles. In this regard, I am not referring to the marvelous profit I've acquired in terms of experience during my years of working in the ministry of assistance. More than that, I'll be endowed with higher values when I return to earth, displaying nobler qualities of preparation in order to be successful in my mission. I was about to express my admiration for how simple this process of earning, profiting, cooperating, and serving was, as compared to the prevailing principles on the planet, when I heard a low murmur of voices approaching the house. Before I could say anything, however, Laura said happily, Our dear ones have returned, and so she got up to welcome them.